So thank you for coming along to the May uh, meetup. This is number three. I think we've done quite well to to run three meetups for Microsoft Loop when um, it was first uh, announced and released back in November. Uh, you know, there was a lot of fanfare and a lot of things talked about, a lot of scene setting in terms of what it might look like. In fact, I've borrowed some of the great renderings and images and used it as part of the the banner for this user group. Um, but as time has, has moved on and Microsoft Loop has, has become GA for everyone, uh, we're all kind of looking for what's the next thing, what's going to happen, what's going to change, and are we going to get more than uh, a shared text experience? Uh, so. I did want to um, first of all just open up and introduce the user group and what we do and then I'll spend a little bit of time on just some news from build around Microsoft Loop before we get into our topic for the day. Uh, so I'll just uh, flick on over to how this user group works. Um, very quickly, it's, it's a, a interesting spin and a vision um, for a user group. I feel like user groups online, we all um, want to feel connected. We want to have uh, the ability to to learn and still connect with people, and we can do it remotely. Um, but it's still missing something that we don't really get the same opportunity to talk and listen and and connect because it's usually one person speaking, and then someone else asks a question, and it's back and forth, back and forth. So the interesting spin with this is I try to use um, breakout rooms. Uh, so purpose of the group because Loop is reasonably new. It's about learning together and understanding what it is and figuring stuff out. Um, adopt a, adopting a, a simplified way of working. So it's becoming a bit clearer to me now, uh, some of the vision for that, uh, as I see some of the things being announced and more capabilities being turned on. Um, so we'll explore a bit more about that. Um, we try and keep it really slim in terms of content that is presented and then opportunity to talk and, and discuss. So think of it like a TED talk, uh, quite concise, not going too deep into anything. Um, and it's around about 20 minutes. Uh, so far, we've had a guest speaker from the product group, uh, Greg, and he, he's, um, he gave us like a, a recap of what Loop is. And then we had Norm and Rebecca and myself, and we were just sharing a few use cases around how we've seen Loop used in, in organizations and clients that we work with. And this time around, it's it's all about um, where does OneDrive fit in this picture and the questions that we have around that. So keeping it tight around 20 minutes is quite nice because then we can get on to reacting to that, thinking about it, sharing our opinions with four or five people in our small breakout rooms. And we use Microsoft Teams breakout rooms to make that possible. It's a semi-smooth experience. Uh, I found sometimes people tune out after the the 20 minutes, they go, right, I'm gone. I don't want to hang around and, uh, and talk with people. So I hurriedly try and set up the, the rooms and then sometimes people end up dropping in a room with only one person. So I'll do my best uh, and we'll see if we can still get people together in like twos, threes and fours. Uh, yeah, so for today's uh, topic, it is about OneDrive and Loop. Um, and we're going to explore some of the thoughts. I know that some people on the call here have definitely looked closely at this and have some good opinions and thoughts to share. So... I'm a facilitator. I'll also present a few of those things and round them all up. Uh, but before I get into that, I just wanted to cover off one of the things um, talked about in terms of news for Microsoft Loop at Microsoft Build. And Build is a, a developer-focused conference, but it does have news that, that kind of reaches wider for people who are information workers, um, IT pros, uh, so you can sort of read between the lines and also see some of the things that uh, will affect your everyday experience of the modern workplace, um, including Microsoft Loop. And uh, if some of you have um, maybe in in your daily interacting with your environment in Microsoft 365, you might have used an adaptive card. Uh, this is a, a way of being able to bring information into the places that we work. Uh, it could be a form, it could be something that you interact with, uh, like a, a link or um, bringing you through to other pieces of information. Um, and the, the great thing is that it's quite relatively easy to, to put together and, and bring into these spaces. And what's opening up as an announcement from, from Build is that Loop Components will be part of that experience. 
So they have some Microsoft partners that have uh, been working early with, uh, let's see, Norm clapping there, Le working early with Microsoft and working with some of these capabilities to to try and show you a picture of what this is like. So Zoho, they've got uh, cards that you can update. I think it's like a ticket to say you know, what's being logged and whether the ticket is open or not. And so the picture this, that's, it's like having that information live and wherever you copy that card, that adaptive card, it's going to be live um, wherever it's seen. So it could be that you send this out to a client or a customer and they're, they're filling out saying, yep, the ticket's still open. I want to add some notes to it. Um, and they're adding that from their own experience in an email, for example. But the backend uh, team back at Zoho or whoever's you know using this system um, will also see wherever they're discussing that card, maybe in a Teams conversation, uh, to say, oh, well, what's happening with that that um, ticket there? And they can actually see this thing being uh, updated live. And that's just a, a simple example of um, how it could be used. So it's quite uh, an exciting thing to see where Loop and Fluid Framework is going to make um, the, if you can see there, the either side of this, these changes happening. It's going to make it easier for people to to bring these synchronized real-time experiences into the way that we work rather than depending on a whole lot of extra code and building these things from the ground up. So that's why Build is making a, a, a big noise about that and, and showing um, its possibilities. Um, before I move on from that, I know Phil, you you'd sort of followed this. But what was your thoughts uh, that you'd come away with um, when you heard about this news? Well, this with this one, basically um, the the team that does this behind Adaptive Cards have a monthly um, community call, and I've been um, catching up with those ones every, for the last few months. And every every time someone asks the question, are Adaptive Cards and Loop going to do um, going to cross over because they kind of do the same things because adaptive cards allow you to create interactive um, items that are kind of live and then when you press stuff you can do actions to do things so you get all these cards in outlook and you get them in mostly in teams these days um, also they're in viva connections the new dashboard in viva connections is all adaptive card stuff so that's mm -hmm. the the new way of doing things and they've all the, the product team have always said no 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 we're not doing anything with loop but uh, we'll look into it we'll look into it so i have a feeling that zoho and the, the partners have actually gone ahead and done some stuff because uh, both technologies are actually open source mm. um so i reckon the partners have, have come up with this one and Microsoft has said, yeah, we'll jump on the bandwagon with this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's, my, that's just me reading mm. between the lines. Um, but adaptive cars, yeah, they are certainly the way, way to go and being able to create stuff, um, create inter, in, interactive things that you want to get across, across the suite um, with stuff. Um, and having loops inside of them just makes them that, that bit more exciting to see what mm. um, combination of things that people will come up with. Mm. So if you're wondering why uh, some of the development appears to be slow with Microsoft Loop and Fluid, it's because it is actually far wider reaching than just our experience today in Teams and soon within Outlook. Um, I did hear within the, the, the user group community here too that some people are starting to see the Loop icon within the new experience of Outlook. So. Um, I, I expect it will be available soon because they want to try and light up these experiences for people at Build to see, oh, I can start developing things for people in email now using Loop components. So that's good. Thanks for your insights there, Phil. Um, let's get into it. I want to just sort of cover off a few things, and I know it's a, it could be a deep topic, um, and there's a few things to say. Uh, but today it's all about OneDrive and Loop and uh, today's experience of uh, where loops are created when we start to bring that collaborative experience into our conversations. Um, I'm going to present from something that I hope to make available to everyone. Um, just, just a side comment, I've been creating a, a Microsoft Loop slide library concept being that I want to make this library available to anyone. It's just a starting point to be able to 
um, have conversations with your clients and with your with your internal people about how do I use loop and what does loop mean and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm just going to keep adding to this and and um, make it available for download so that you can use it as a starting point and customize it. Um, so as you can see, I've been <laughs> adding frequent, uh, frantically the content for today. Um, don't know what the animation is, but but loops stored in OneDrive. Uh, I will cut over to to demonstrate in this too quickly. Um, but when we create a loop today, uh, we add a, a loop component to our Teams chat. Uh, the the loop is a file, um, and that file is stored in OneDrive. We pretty quickly discovered that as as we began to explore it and work with it, and um, it, it, as you're starting to create the loop in your conversation, it even says it's synchronizing uh, content to to somewhere. So today, when you're adding a loop to your conversations, um, it's stored in OneDrive. Um, loop components um, at the moment are only available in private chats internally and group chats, and that includes private meetings. Um, so just recapping some of the, the core facts here, that um, these files are only available for people inside your organization to collaborate with you. And um, we know that uh, soon that'll be an experience that's available within, within Outlook too. Uh, but let's just have a quick look at this in action. I won't sort of start a, a loop from scratch, but I've got a... Uh, a few of them that I've done with demo users here with Matt. Um, one concept that I like to get across was um, was uh, using one-on-one -on -one, uh, loops for meetings. I'll just have a quick look there at Alex's comment. Should keep the chat open. Are the fluid files loops, fluid files loop pages? Uh, that's how I've been using them. Exactly, Alex, that's exactly what they are, yeah. Um, and they were supposed to change um, sometime now from being dot fluid to dot loop. So look for that change as well. Uh, and I say change in that I expect it'll be new loops that will be called dot loop and that dot fluid, maybe the existing files will, will stay called dot fluid. But those are the loop pages, correct? So when, um, okay, let's just go through it quickly. We'll go add a, a loop, a paragraph loop to a, a new chat. All of the syncing that's going on in the background here, it's setting up the loop file. And today, because it's a private chat, it's setting it up within uh, OneDrive and my OneDrive. I'll step through that soon too. Um, I'll give it a title. Um, so this is a great idea with Matt. And that will um, soon become the, the name of the fluid file, the, the loop file. Uh, it isn't available yet. It isn't actually finalized and set in stone. In fact, if if I gave up on this and said, no, nah, I'm not going to start a loop with, with Matt now, um, it's it's no longer um, in play, then it won't be saved to my OneDrive. It's, it's just done. Um, other things here too that we'll explore a bit are permissions so that when this loop, I want to share it with people, I can control who can use the sharing link and how wide can it be shared? Can it be shared with anyone in my organization, people currently in the chat? These are familiar settings, but they have just a slightly different effect in, in loop and that it affects the uh, the link, the sharing link that you create. So loop isn't created till I send it. Let's send it. Syncing. And now we've got a file that's called Great Idea with Matt. It's in my OneDrive and um, it is a loop file. So we'll go over and have a look at it. Um, there it is, top of the screen. I think I've got my zooming call tool working. Yes, I have. Yep, so loop paragraph. <laughs> um, it hasn't yet uh, refreshed the screen. It will come up with the name that I gave the file soon too. I think I was a bit quick off the mark there, but that should change soon. Um, you can tell it's new because of that gleam, the little eyelash. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a file there in my OneDrive and in a folder called Teams Chat Files. And if we go back to some of these concepts here, you can see private group chats. That's exactly what we have going with, with Matt and myself. It's a one-on-one -on -one chat. And if I added 
a few people to a group chat and share the loop with them, then it's available to them. But again, it's it's been saved into my OneDrive. And uh, before I move on from that core concept, uh, I wonder um, when loops are available in, in Outlook and you can create them from Outlook, where will they be stored? Will they be stored in um, Microsoft Teams chat files with the rest of the loops? Doesn't really make sense based on the folder. Or will they be stored in, if uh, some of you use this occasionally, um, a folder called, where is it, Attachments. Mine's called Attachment 1 because it had a bit of a, a mare as it was um, getting set up. But when you're in your, One, in your Outlook and you say, I want to save this file to my OneDrive, it drops it in this default folder called Attachments. So interesting, like, I wonder where loop files are going to end up when it's in our um, Outlook experience. Um, <laughs> benefits of using OneDrive. Now, this is the, the hot topic or conversation, really, I think, um, that some would say initially, oh, right, really? I've been trying to tell people for so long, don't save collaborative files in your OneDrive. Put them somewhere where everyone can get to them. Put them in a SharePoint site. Put them in a team where you're sharing them with people. Don't use them in OneDrive because of all the different things that we'll, we'll talk about soon. But let's just talk about the benefits to begin with. Look at the positive side. Uh, it's ad hoc storage. This is a conversation between Matt and I. Um, no one else is involved. And to get things started quickly, because that's the point of loop, it is about trying to uh, make sure people can collaborate quickly without too many barriers. Uh, so I initiated the collaboration. Then it makes sense that the file will be dropped into my OneDrive. Um, sharing is specific to the conversation. So the conversation with Matt and I at the moment uh, and this is just a screenshot or two of, of an example. Um, if I left permissions to say people within your organization, then uh, if I'll just zoom in a bit here. Whoops. Ooh, that's new. That's new. I think this might be a, a PowerPoint slide feature, but somehow it did some weird spotlight thing there. I don't know what was going on there. Um, but I'll stop getting distracted by new shiny features and keep talking. Um, this top link here, if I was to just share it with everyone in my organization, allow anyone to copy that link, then um, that's what the link will will be used. Um, if I chose share it with specific people and I added Matt specifically, then in the background, the permissions on that loop file in my OneDrive will show Matt and myself and that the link will work for both of us. It's been shared specifically with us. Uh, so it's a conversation. We're collaborating quickly, and when we need to loop other people in, it's easy for us to add them to it, and the permissions are easy to adjust. Um, so by that, it's as secure as SharePoint is, as secure as OneDrive is, uh, and it is meant to follow the SharePoint um, archiving, retention, and compliance rules. However, one of the last points I'll cover off before we cut over to, to having a discussion is that there are still some weaknesses around that and how that works. Uh, so there is some work still to do. But it's it's in OneDrive because it's also the SharePoint infrastructure and it's, it's going to follow that. And once everything is working as it should, um, it's standardized like any other Office file. A uh, few other benefits uh, you'll see, and I can quickly demo this too, it's familiar file management. So if you do need to manage your file, <clears throat> excuse me, your loop file, then you can just go to OneDrive and manage it like any other Office document. So familiar to us that we can, you know, uh, copy a link to it. We can uh, check out the version history. We can check out the activity feed. Let's have a quick look. Uh, so great idea with Matt. Now let's go to something a bit newer, uh, a bit older. So is this one here? Yep. All right. So the activity feed over here, let's just do a live Zoom. Hopefully this works. Um, we can see who's got access. We can inspect the link and see all that. We can see the activity, who um, adjusted it most recently. Uh, I think at the very bottom here, we could actually find the path. So there's all this just familiar stuff that maybe not all of us use to manage our files out of SharePoint and OneDrive, but I, I you know, 
quite appreciate that those sorts of things are available to us if we want to treat this loop as just a regular Office file. We know there's a vision to have the Loop desktop app and it all been a cohesive experience of this is where you find your loops and your loop pages and your loop workspaces. But um, behind it all is the power of OneDrive and SharePoint. All right, so um, familiar file experience, file management. But, hmm, the implications of copying a loop. Those of us who are curious and thought, okay, I want to follow good practice. I can see this loop is being created in my OneDrive, so I'm going to move it over to a place where the rest of my team can get to. It's collaborative. And that's, you know, the, the right thinking too. If, if an idea begins in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, great, no problem. Um, keep your thinking going here that as that idea grows and you want to um, have more people involved, it's perfectly fine to shift a Word file, a PowerPoint file, whatever it is that you're working on one-on-one -on -one, over into a, a shared space. And people have you know, experimented the same way with Loop. Uh, what happens today, though, is that it breaks that ability to embed the Loop. So while you can bring that file over into SharePoint and into the Teams experience, uh, all you'll find is a, a link that will take you through to the Loop experience in office.com you won't get that lovely embedded experience that really is uh, one of the strengths of working with loop so it breaks that embed um, sharing loops using onedrive controls don't quite align with loop sharing controls i mentioned this uh, earlier that sharing loops um, when you're in a conversation like this i had that option to say how who, who can share this link and how wide can it be shared? Um, so we can sort of simulate that again. I'll copy a link to that that loop, drop it into the chat. Syncing, syncing. So it's the same content, um, but here's here's the, uh, the core part here. I'm controlling where this link can be shared and how wide it can be shared. It's not really setting permissions explicitly on the, the file. It, it's it's setting it on a link. Um, it's only when I'm setting specific people here that things change a bit. So some similarities, but when you go back into your OneDrive experience, and I said, well, I want to share this uh, creating awareness loop with with other people. I'm going to, I don't know, we'll change this up so that it's for specific people and We'll drop in like uh, Jack Sparrow and share that with him. All right, so that, that has been shared, but the link that's sent to him is not a loop enabled link. It's not going to allow him to embed. It's just going to take him through to uh, this office.com editing experience here. So yeah, a few things that still need a bit of work. And then the, the one of the core things that um, the community sort of really th was thinking about, especially the IT pros, offboarding people. When these loops are all stored in OneDrive, what happens when someone moves on? Who's going to take responsibility for the, the mesh, which sounds so close to mess, <laughs> of permissions and who accesses what and where and all that sort of stuff? Oh my goodness, it's going to be um, <coughs> a difficult thing. A good thing that SharePoint um, has made it a bit easier that when you're copying files in and around that you can you can say, I still want to keep the existing permissions. And so it, it shares those things explicitly. But yeah, still a rough experience in that sense. Um, lastly, and I didn't really grab any screenshots, but I will just cut over to something that was really well covered um, by Tony Redmond um, on compliance. And was concerns around, okay, so loops are stored in SharePoint and OneDrive, and they uh, have a, um, you know, all the superpowers that um, SharePoint and OneDrive have and legal holds and compliance and, and all those sorts of things. But hang on. So he dug into uh, using the new purview and the scenario that, okay, what if I use loop to have a private little conversation uh, for insider trading? And I'm going to sort of plan that and say, oh, you maybe you want to go and invest in this thing over here. And when you're doing your purview search, 
looking for any kind of evidence of those sorts of conversations about insider trading. Um, sadly, today, it, it is not picked up. So the search will not look inside of the loop file to find that. And so at the moment, there is a, a workaround, and he, he steps through, like you could download the file, um, but that becomes quite burdensome to try and do that. And Microsoft have, no, I think I had the search. No, I forgot to bring up the page, but I will, I'll share it later. Um, even on their own page, they've said, yep, this is something we're working on. We'll, we'll come up with a way to to download the file so that you can use that for for searching through and gav gathering evidence. Um, so still some work needed there in terms of making the content of a loop available for um, those sorts of legal searches and um, fitting in with the rest of the, the Microsoft stack for that. So those are the sort of key thoughts and things I've, I've got to say about OneDrive and the like. I know that we've been going for a bit and there's there's a, a good some good discussions going on in the chat there that I haven't really had a look at. But I want to um, now just sort of open this up. I think we've got enough people to probably have, let's say, two groups over in, uh, in Teams. Um, so we'll just go back over to here and just explain a bit about how this works. Um, we're going to start up a, a breakout group or a couple of breakout groups. I'm going to assign you guys randomly, you, you all, not you guys, everyone, um, to, to the groups, and then you can have a, a chat about that. Now, there's two questions that might help the conversation along, um, or you can just talk about generally what you've heard and what what your your experience has been about using Loop and and OneDrive. Um, the interactive board, I can just copy the the link in there. Thanks, Norm, for being one of the people in. Let's copy that, and we'll also change it to edit. So now that the the li the link is live for editing, there we go. That means that you can enter the board and uh, join Norm and others. And there is a couple of sections. I'll just zoom out a bit here. Where you can drop on your thoughts into these uh, little sticky notes. So you can just double click and say, um, OK, what was this question here? What are your opinions and perspective of a person sharing, collaborating, and managing loop files out of OneDrive? And so you might have an opinion there about that. So. Um, I think it's we'll zoom in a bit there so you can see it. It's a good system. I don't know. I'm being a bit random. So you can uh, add those there. Right. So for those who are still here, um, thank you for, for hanging about. I'll keep this really quick. Let's just try and go into our breakout rooms. Um, Breakout rooms automatically. We've got two rooms. Looks like it'll assign for two rooms around about six people. So we'll try that. Uh, that's around about a good number. I think if we went any smaller, it might be a bit more difficult. I'll create the rooms. And then um, once those are created, uh, if you haven't experienced breakout rooms before, they're a bit like putting this main meeting on hold and then being beamed over to a side meeting. Um, so you'll be in there for about 20 minutes and then I'll call you out from those rooms and we can come back and just have a quick chat before we, we round up the, the user group. Um, so I do see there's two rooms created and beam me up. Thanks, Phil. I'm going to open up the rooms and you will just randomly sort of start disappearing into those rooms and I'll hang about here in the lobby to see if there's anyone else that, that has trouble joining, rejoining, or maybe they're then you and hopefully join you in a room soon. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Good. This kind of works. Uh, I'm getting the hang of breakout rooms. I like them. Anyone else use them? Yeah. Yep. Not enough though. Yeah, only as a, a participant. As a participant, right. Yeah, yeah they need to be to a bit faster, but um, it kind of works. Good. I think we've got everyone back who who was and who hasn't who hasn't dropped out along the way. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, sharing the screen. So, I mean, how was that for you? Uh, I think our our group uh, had a good 
good chat about things. Um, we sort of pulled apart the our thoughts and feelings about managing uh, loop files and um, even some, some limitations that we've discovered. Uh, thanks, Damien, for for sharing that. And uh, I'll just highlight that too. Um, the Microsoft Loop user group on LinkedIn, which is what I try to use to coordinate these um, these events. Um, feel free to join it if you haven't already. Uh, that's where Damien's posted his discovery around uh, loops and sharing them with with 20 or less people uh, and the the permission around specific sharing it with specific people. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. There's a few other people that that share some of their observations about things coming as well. So highly recommend that you join this group. It's it's becoming a bit more active as people are are sharing their thoughts and seeing sharing what they see. So that's really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, how did you find? How was the other group? Um, Norm, I think you were in there. Did you guys get into discussing quite a lot? We did. We. Um... Our conversation was 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 mixed. We we tried to take it from the uh, uh, the, the the perspective of uh, business users and how they might perceive Loop at this this current stage versus uh, people like you know the traditional IT people that are invested and excited by this technology and different features, uh, uh, and how Loop may not quite be ready for them to adopt outside of. Uh, meetings and chats with uh, with colleagues. Um, uh, you know, we also talked about, you know, the the the, the ever present concerns of. Uh, product or, or app and service com confusion for 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 users knowing what to use, what and when and where. And then we also talked about. Uh, you know, uh, um, w would we prefer to have loop just as a a, a team centric? Or start first in Teams approach, or or start in something else like, like Outlook, and then uh, uh, and I suppose that all depends on on how you work. You know, external work, internal work uh, will usually dictate the type of tool that you use. Um, but I am I'm personally excited to see something like a loop component, whether it's an agenda or a task list or something like that, being created inside of Outlook shared with a external party and never have to have a exchange of emails with version one version two types of conversations and, and i don't know if that's really going to happen but that would be an exciting place to land and would add value to the user experience less friction in doing the work and how could mm. that not be seen as a, a success for microsoft loop mm. Yeah, that's a, a good summary and like um yeah it did lean into some other th thoughts i had around loop and sharing them externally and maybe you know that's another good reason why things start in onedrive because uh, as long as you've got your organizational settings set up to support your security requirements then uh, external sharing can be done in a controlled fashion and could cover that scenario so that's really cool um Tons more to talk about and share, and I, again, I'll just encourage you to, to continue these conversations in the the LinkedIn group as well. It's another good place to tease these things out and have a good talk. Um, I wish LinkedIn was was a bit better than what it is, but it is meeting some needs, right? It's it's okay, it's good. Um, just some uh, resources as well to sort of finish off. I, don't like putting my face on these too much. I'm also always looking for other people creating content and having conversations about about Loop, which is why I really appreciate uh, Tony's effort in, in surfacing the uh, compliance uh, questions around around Loop as well. Um, and uh, I'll add the the link that you shared, Damien, to 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 these resources about. Um, the, the considerations to look for with with loop and some of the the gotchas at the moment the um where is an overview for loop so there's a section down here and i think um yes yeah, so it's covering some of those known issues yeah that uh that one there yeah so uh, a good good one to keep in mind and 
I think at the moment in these these uh, docs, um, these bullet points at the end of the files are at the moment more almost like a placeholder for we're going to come back and fix this problem or we're going to come back and explain it a bit more and make it a bit easier to understand. So it's good to keep an eye on some of these core documents around Loop that will continue to have things added to them um, if you're wanting to keep up with, with the changes there. And again, like talk about it in the LinkedIn group to make others aware of it and, and get your thoughts um, in, in there too. Um, but yeah, thank you all for for attending. And I know it's uh, it's been a little while. Uh, I, I've not been consistently on the same week of the same month, you know, to to set up these these um, user group meetups. But I'll try again to maybe next next month we'll be talking about Outlook and what it's like to use Loop and Outlook. I, I had hoped it would have turned up by now, but it's just on the cusp of it, and I think that we'll, we'll probably see it uh, next month. Um, if you have any other thoughts and ideas about what else you'd like to talk about around the Loop experience, or even uh, it doesn't even have to be looking into Loop today, but, but Loop tomorrow, because some people's discussions in the community have really opened up my thoughts around um, being able to work in one place, like I know a lot of products claim that, go to go to Teams and work in one place and you don't have to ever leave Teams. But imagine being able to work on one page and be able to do everything that you need to meet, collaborate, co-author, manage tasks, all in this one canvas. So, uh, you know, it's future thoughts of, of Loop and what that might look like. Uh, Thank you all. Uh, I'll be running session two later on for, for APAC and for the US in their evening for those who uh, didn't manage to find the time during their business day, uh, like you all did. <laughs> but uh, we'll see you again next month and hopefully uh, join the conversations and um, and LinkedIn. Um, yes, Amanda. Raise oh, it was the, the phantom hand that I didn't mean to raise, but thanks everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. There's a um, for those of you who sometimes join a, a, a Zoom meeting, um, a client of mine has a new feature in there where if you raise your hand, the camera recognizes that you're raising your hand. So it raises the hand like Amanda just did. It gets very confusing because they're, they're just waving and oh, no, no, I don't have a question. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So we'll see what we'll see what Tings does in that space as well about AI recognition of gestures. <laughs> all right. Um, thanks all. Um, see you again next time. Thanks, Good job, Daryl, considering you've Thank got you. COVID. <laughs> yeah.